Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the first vlog of 2021 and welcome to episode three of the Dublin Murder Squad book club. So welcome back. Uh, if you have participated in the first two or if you just are randomly watching this vlog, welcome. Don't look at my Christmas decorations that I haven't put away yet. Don't look at my COVID face. I mean, you kind of have to, but I feel like this is a safe space here, right? Because with every episode of the Dublin Murder Squad Book Club, we're losing people, people who aren't true Tana fans like us. And that's okay, they're wrong, obviously, but that's okay. But I feel like this is a safe space for me to be a bit covid -y, feeling a bit sorry for myself, and the perfect time to pick up the third book, Faithful Place by Tana French in this series. By the time you see this, I will be totally COVID free. I'm already feeling a lot, lot better. I get out of isolation tomorrow. So it's all good. This video is not going up for like another week, uh, but yeah. I'm not feeling my absolute best today, but we're definitely on the up. And I just think what a way to cheer myself up rather than to read one of my favorite books from my favorite author. As I say, this is the third book. You can read them in any order. So you don't have to have read the first two books. I feel like a lot of people who are watching this probably have, because as I say, it's a book club, we're doing it together. And I'm really, really excited to reread this one because this is the book that I remember the least about from this whole series. So the first book I reread three times, I think, before we started my book club. So that one was very clear in my mind. The Likeness I'd only read once and it had been since 2015, but it was just very like clear in my mind. I would say this one, which I also read summer 2015, read it back to back with The Likeness. And although I then quite quickly read the fourth and the fifth, they just stick in my mind more partly because the fourth one I think is my favorite. The fifth one just feels fresher because I read it more recently. I don't know, for whatever reason, I don't remember this one as clearly. And so I'm really, really excited to start it. So what do I remember about it? What does the blurb say? So this one is following Frank, who is in the second book. He's in the likeness. He's the undercover guy who is Cassie's like handler. And this book is about him. And I remember that he goes home. I'm pretty sure it's set over Christmas or at least it's kind of two timeline, one part was set over Christmas. 20 or something years ago, when Frank was 18, he was gonna run away with his girlfriend and then she never turned up to meet him. And everyone thought like, she wasn't necessarily seen as missing. Everyone thought that she just did run away. But now something is found that makes them think she was killed or that she is missing. And so Frank goes back to like where he grew up, his parents' house and starts to investigate. That's pretty much what I remember. So we've got like, I don't think it's too timeline, but we're thinking a lot about whenever it was 20 years ago, and then we're in the present. What else do I remember? I remember like that it's a very closed kind of community. He isn't in touch with his parents, or he hasn't been, so going back to the house brings up a lot of memories for him. Uh, I remember that he really like loved this girlfriend. I remember the police officer, because Frank's not investigating it officially, as far as I remember, he's just like, caught up in it and I remember the police officer is then the guy who's in Broken Harbor the fourth one and he's one of my favorite characters. I remember that once someone once told me that Frank is actually Tana French's favorite character which kind of makes sense because I think he's in the most of them because he's also in the fifth one and I don't think any other person is in three and yeah I think that's pretty much all I remember I'm just gonna start reading it I'm gonna read I don't know maybe the first 50 100 pages or something and then we'll check back in and start talking about this book. Having some lunch. This one goes out to all the haters of eggs and tuna. Put it together, perfect lunch. Okay, so I've read the first 75 pages of Faithful Place. I might have called it The Faithful Place earlier because one of the other ones is called The Secret Place. And also lest we forget, I do have COVID brain frog. So, and I said frog. So just anything I say in this video that doesn't make sense, pretend it made sense. So let's talk about the opener. So we're with Frank who, we met in the second book, he works undercover, but like he's not really allowed to do the missions anymore. Definitely not called missions because he's like a bit old. He's done too many. So he like orchestrates undercover operations. He is divorced. We meet his wife and daughter in this book. I think his wife's called Olivia. And I want to say his daughter's called Holly. And I think Holly's like nine. So yeah, he's got this young daughter and his ex-wife. Um, at the start of the book, he picks up his daughter for the weekend because he has her on the weekends. He loves her, we get the vibe. I think he's about 40 or like approaching 40. And we're told, you know, he had a kind of bad divorce from his ex-wife. She's very well off and he kind of winds her up. Frank is very much like a wind up merchant kind of character, but he's really devoted to his daughter and his job and his city. And also Holly is a character to look out for because she is one of the main characters in the secret place which is the fifth book so a little easter egg there also i should have said before this is going to be a full spoiler review as it always is with my job murder squad book club videos so just beware if you didn't know that so yeah 
he's got Holly for the weekend, but then he gets a call from his sister, who's the only member of his family that he's still in touch with, saying they found Rosie, who is this girlfriend, and at the start of the novel you find out, like, yeah, it was when he was 18, you get a short bit from that perspective. Him and Rosie were going to run away to England together, it was a big secret, they were meant to meet up one night at midnight, he went to the meeting place, she wasn't there, but there was a note basically saying, like, I'm sorry, I have to do this. Like, it's the only way I'll be able to follow my dreams. So he just thinks, oh, she's she's gone without me. And he's, like, gutted. He leaves soon after that, like, becomes a policeman. But his sister rings him and he's, like, they're knocking down that building because they were meant to meet up in, like, a derelict building on their street. And they found her suitcase with, like, her birth certificate in it, her ferry tickets, all her clothes. And so it's becoming clear or semi-clear that maybe Rosie didn't leave. Maybe she was prevented from ever leaving this place that they grew up in, which is a kind of suburb of Dublin. It's basically just like one terrace street with a lot of kind of working class characters and the street has its own sort of like hierarchy and it's very much some more like well-to-do, not well-to-do, but there's some more like some people who are very by the book. There's a lot of people who are a little bit under the under the radar of the police and it's like no one grasses people don't like police officers which makes it a bit problematic because now frank's just has to go home because he wants to find out about rosie and he hasn't seen his family in years apart from his one sister and he hasn't seen this community in years and it holds a lot of memories for him so he goes back so yeah he's got this family his mum and his dad and then he has two brothers and two sisters so he's still in touch with jackie who's the younger sister and then he's got a sister called carmel who's like married with kids um jackie's also married they're all kind of like you know in their middle age and then he's got a brother called shay who's the oldest brother who's a bit of a like dodgy dealer and then a younger brother called kevin who's this like nice guy and as soon as i read those brothers i was like okay it's all coming back to me now to quote celine dion whilst i said before i had no idea before i picked this book up again i couldn't remember at all like who'd done it so i was really really excited to pick it up because with the likeness i could totally remember who'd done it same within the woods now i'm like i think it might be one of the brothers or his dad and you'd think it might be shay because he's like the older dodgy brother but then i was like kevin seems a bit too nice to me but then also kevin was pretty young when rosie went missing so i still don't definitely know but i think i'm almost certain it's one of those three people basically frank and rosie had to be in a relationship in secret because her dad was really overprotective so he's speaking to like rosie's family there's some weird stuff going on there rosie's friends at the time and i love that when tana does all her like little interviews i like that it's frank like forced back in with his family and with his siblings and i think there's gonna be loads in here that i totally forgotten about um and frank is a fun character to read from because he's so like unofficial like the police aren't involved yet he's trying to kind of keep everything under the radar just sending it off for tests with people he knows and he is just like a cheeky chappy fun character but he did really love rosie and um, so you're seeing kind of his softer side and i'm enjoying it and i'm excited to just lie here and read some of this book now i'm only on page like 80 but um I feel like Tana French does this thing, well, she definitely does it in In the Woods, where she gives you a little clue, like, really early on about something that would solve it all. And so Frank and his brother Kevin have gone to look in, like, number 16, which is this deserted house where they all, like, used to hang out as teenagers. It was where Frank and Rosie were meant to meet and where he found the letter and now her suitcase has been found there and it's, like, really dilapidated and stuff. Um, and Kevin's talking about because he's a bit younger than Frank, how they never used to hang out there. And Frank's like, well, this is where I came to lose my virginity. Like, this is where we came to, you know, drink and smoke or whatever. And Kevin says, by the time I was old enough for the good action, nobody came in here anymore. There were rats. And Frank's like, there was always rats, blah, blah, blah. He was like, you weren't here for... And then Kevin's like, you weren't here for it, but someone put down poison or something, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, a bunch of the rats crawled into the walls and died. And Jesus, I'm not kidding, the smell of them, worse than the piggeries. We'd have died of typhoid. And I'm like, okay, I can't claim any like cleverness for this because it might just be locked in my brain. But I feel like the smell in the wall was rosy. And like later on, like at the end of the book, Frank's going to be like, when Kevin said about the smell, it's very much like in the woods with the trowel when it's like Mark's missing trowel or whatever. So that's my, my first prediction. Also, I remember, I can't remember if I've said this, I remember that this was like my least favourite of all of them the first time I read them. And I can't really remember why. I just feel like it didn't like... She wasn't my favourite. Um, I still loved it. So I'm interested to see if that will be the case this time. Okay, so the rat thing happened like three seconds later. So I was right, but I wasn't very right. So yeah, they found a body. It's obviously going to be Rosie's in the house. Um, and I'm just filming because also Cooper's just arrived. He's like the pathologist that's in. I don't know if he's in all of them. He's definitely in the first few. And I just love him. He's so funny. And I just love when Tana puts in a little recurring characters. That's what makes it. I just love the little recurring characters we get. I'm like a full 
Dublin Med Squad stan. Okay, I'm up to page like 100. I haven't got very far because I keep stopping to talk about things and now it's like dark. And um, I had a little walk around my 10 foot yard, get my fresh air in for the day. I love Scorcher. I know you're not meant to. I think it's because Scorcher Mick Kennedy is like the guy in Broken Harbour. And Broken Harbour's my favourite, I think. And I don't know, I just love him. Like, I love the dynamic between him and Frank. It's really fun. Like, their dialogue's really snappy. But I know you're meant to be, like, rooting for Frank. And I am. But I just really have a soft spot for Mick. Like, is that my toxic trait, perhaps? I like, I like Scorcher. So Frank and his siblings are all, like, in the pub. And it's, like, a really good scene. Just because you're getting a feel for, like, the siblings. Obviously, they haven't, like, been in touch in a while. But it's, like... It's just a really good scene, um, but they're talking about, Frank's again talking about what you would die for, what a buzzkill. And Frank says like their dad once said he died for Ireland and they're talking about that. And then Frank, the cheeky git is like, someone asked him if he would die for Ireland. He goes, I would in my hole. I was posting Mayo for a while. Have you ever been to Mayo, have you? It's boggers and cheap and scenery. I'm not dying for that. Rude, that's where all my family's from. It's beautiful, beautiful rural environment. Me again in the same place. A lot to discuss about this. I'm 200 pages in and like at like 170 pages, I had like a list. I was like, I'll wait to 200, then I'll check in. Then bloody Kevin went and died and I totally forgot that that even happened. And now I'm like, oh my God, Kevin's dead. So we've got much to discuss. And then something else just happened. Um, but Alex just got home from work. We've ordered a Chinese and I'm feeling much better, which is great. But also not doing dry jam this year. If anyone is an OG who was watching my vlogs this time last year, me and Alex tried to do dry January. We got like three weeks in, but it was roof stoof. Um, so this year I was like, I'm just gonna do only drinking on the weekends, like no weeknight drinking. So this week it has been very helped by the fact I've had COVID and felt like um, hot garbage, but it's now Friday and I'm feeling better. And so I'm gonna have a glass of white wine, which I'm very excited about. Alex just came back with a bottle of vino for me. It's now chilling. And then we're gonna have some wine. Why, what's on it? A hundred years of girl guiding 50p. Don't be giving them that. Got my wine. It does have soda in it. Um, what? I'm talking to myself. It does have soda in it. Not that I wouldn't drink a bucket of wine, but <sighs> Alex is just telling me that I have a 50p that's really, really rare because it's a hundred years of girl guiding. I said, is it <laughs> rare? Hey, happy Saturday. Um, I hope you weren't wanting this vlog to be interesting because I just tested positive again despite testing negative yesterday. So I'm not free today. I can't leave the house again which is great and alex is out all day i have no food in the house because i was like oh, i'll be out i'll be going to the shop going for a walk no miss miss rona said no 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 so let's just forget about that will i shower today perhaps not now perhaps not let's talk about the book so as i say i had all these thoughts about it before kevin died and i'm still quite shook that i'd completely forgotten that kevin died so i do just really enjoy reading from Frank's perspective because he is quite funny. Like I think Tana French is funny anyway. Like there's quite a bit of humor in the first one with like Rob and Cassie, but Frank just has like a very dry kind of sense of humor and he's a good character to get in some like good one-liners and stuff. Um, and I'm really interested in like their family dynamic because as I say, like I am a bit hazy on stuff and basically like we're finding out when Frank spends time with his siblings. Very much the vibe is that like his dad was abusive or continuing to be abusive, but very abusive when they were children to like his mum. And also I think he hit the kids. And there's some tensions there with like the older kids, like Shay and Carmel. It's a bit where they're like, you don't know the half of it. So that's interesting. I think that's gonna come out more. And what I was gonna say is Kevin definitely knows something. Like Kevin's just being a bit shifty. I think I said that before. And when they're having this family argument and like, I was like, I just got the vibes that Kevin really knows something. Then Kevin tries to ring Frank, Frank ignores him and then Kevin's dead. So Kevin obviously did know something, but yeah, I can't believe I'd forgotten that he died. Also like before Kevin died and I imagine it will continue to be, but before then when it was like Frank and Scorch are talking, it was very much like they're both sort of tiptoeing around the fact that Frank is kind of the prime suspect. It was his girlfriend, they were meant to run away together, and then he was the person, you know, he says he was there, then he ran away straight after. When they find the letter, because they find like the other half of the letter Rosie wrote on Kevin's body, which is weird, but basically that shows that she wasn't planning to run away without Frank. So I guess that removes a bit of the motive when it was like, they thought literally she leaves the letter being like, can't be with you anymore, Frank, and then she did. That takes away a bit of the motive, but now like Frank's brother's dead. With the other half of the note, I still think maybe Frank is gonna be a suspect. I don't love 
crime books where the main character is a suspect, like is a innocent man trying to prove that he isn't guilty, but I don't think there's too much of that in there, we will see. The other thing that I'd completely forgotten about, I'm up to page 200 now, and I'd completely forgotten about Stephen Moran's like whole thing in this book. Basically, Frank decides that in order to kind of find out more about the investigation, because Scorch won't tell him anything, he's gonna infiltrate one of the floaters, like the detectives who are just like helping Scorcher. So he chooses this guy called Steve Moran, he's pretty young, but very like good. And he's gonna try and like manipulate him into thinking that they're working an undercover operation, I think. But yeah, that totally f fled my mind because basically in book five, Stephen Moran is the main police officer. And when I was thinking about this series, as I do all the time, I remember being like, I can't understand, because usually, right, we're introduced to a police officer, and then in the next one we follow that police officer. Rob, Cassie was his right-hand man, second one's about Cassie, Frank's the one from her past, third one's about Frank. The fourth one's about Scorcher, as I said, about Mick Kennedy, and then the fifth one is about Stephen Moran, and Frank's in it again, kind of, because it's about Frank's daughter, Holly. So it's interesting anyway that she does kind of like skip her, like Broken Harbor is I'd say the most unmoored from the rest of them. Obviously we meet Scorcher in this one, but like that one, no one follows immediately after that. But I'm not even sure that I knew the first time I read this series. If I even remembered that Stephen Moran was that, or if I thought we were just following a random cold case guy. This isn't really spoilers for the fifth one, it's just that we follow Steve Moran and he's working in cold cases, but did I know that? I might have known it at the time and then just forgotten, but yeah, it's. I was like, that makes a lot of sense. I've been recently like, why do we start following Stephen? But I'm excited. That's a whole added element of the book that I'd forgotten about, which is really exciting. So yeah, I am in a bad mood. So I'm just gonna read my book, I think. I'm still not like remotely ready because I look horrible because my mum was like, oh, I'll nip to the shop for you. But then she accidentally took two and a half hours and I kept being like, oh, I'll just wait. So I thought before I get in the shower, I'd show you my little haul of COVID things. Should be a meal deal. Diet Coke is like the most boring meal deal ever, but kind of mood I'm in. My favorite crisps ever. Some milk for my tea. Bottle of Prosecco, cause you know she's in wild alone today. And my favorite lagers. Cause I was like, do I want to drink Prosecco tonight? Do I want to drink beer? Gotta have options. Asahi's my favorite beer. And then bless her heart. She was like, oh, I bought you this jumper at m &S. It's really similar. I have one in like dark gray that isn't from m but then m &S have a version. Um, and that's sweet of her. I don't think it's gonna fit me. I think it might be a bit small, but we'll try it on. But yeah, I'm really hungry now. I think I'm gonna eat my meal deal. Hello, so I got a bit ready. Gonna film a video, so thought I'd put a bit of makeup on and just, you know, do it alive. Why not? Um, yeah, let's talk about this. I'm like 240 pages in, so I didn't read too much more this morning, but even in those 40 pages, I was just struck by how like emotional this book is. I mean, on the one hand, <laughs> I must say, Frank, you do, Frank's an interesting character because you, like him and you feel like you know him now because he's it's his second book you know but the way he is like aiming to manipulate steven like he is you see his ruthless streak for sure but then like at kevin's wake and when he's having sort of an altercation with his father and then when he goes to his ex-wife Liv's house it just shows how well tana french can write like really emotional, sad scenes, connections between two people in a way that really, th this part of it isn't massively to do with the crime. You know, he's, he's got anxiety that they're gonna try and say that Kevin killed her and then killed himself, but that's not, you know, I feel like in some crime books, like you just wouldn't have these sections because they're not forwarding the plot in a really straightforward way. But just the bit with his dad and when, you know, he's got all this like rage and he's almost like trying to rile his dad up because he wants him to punch him. Then he's like disgusted by himself and he's thinking like, how are we still going in these circles? And you really see the way like Frank feels about his his childhood. And I was actually like really sad reading. They're talking about, um you know, the night, do you remember the night Shay went unconscious and this kind of thing. And it was just really, really sad. Like you're reading about like child abuse basically in a, Again, not in a way that, ooh, plot twisty way. It just, uh, yeah, it just really, really moved me actually. Um, and then you again see how, you see the like legacy of that when Frank and Liv have this argument because she has allowed Holly behind his back to be his family. And even that was just like a good little twist. I was like, oh my God, I'd like forgotten about that. But then just like the relationship between Frank and Liv, this like 
a really tender moment but then they're having an argument and you just see like how much he carries this weight of his family around with him and yeah I guess like on first read or at least thinking about on first read I didn't remember all these bits of it like just how because I think Tana French writes like very deep emotional scenes and very like complex human interactions so so well but that wasn't I guess what stuck with me in this book and on second read it definitely is so I'm gonna do another good little stint um maybe read up to 300 pages but then I'll just end up stopping if I want to talk about something but yes enjoying this taking it slow enjoying my time with it it's good hello so I've honestly given up on there being like any sort of different backgrounds to this vlog I imagine the entire thing will be from this room if not from this angle but that's okay because you're not here for me here for Queen Tana. Still home alone. I remember if I said Alex is on like a boys day, he went to the match and he's like out with the boys. But yeah, the boys were doing that and then me and my friend Amy were gonna meet them for a drink and have like a girls day with her new puppy if my COVID test had come back negative, but we all know that didn't happen. So Al's out, that's fine. I, I am happy for him. I have slight FOMO, but I'm just dealing with that by ordering yet another takeaway. Um, and refusing to do any of the housework that I said I would do. So I think that's fair. I'm now like 300 pages into Faithful Place and I'm just really enjoying it and I'm really enjoying like taking my time with it. I think this weekend has been like the perfect time to read it because I simply can't do anything else. So I'll be like, okay, take a break from reading to do, I don't know, mindless scrolling on TikTok or whatever. But then when I am reading it, I'm just like, there's no rush, hun. Read it at your leisure. So up to 300 pages. And now I'm very much consumed with who done it. Who did this thing? Because my main suspects were the dad, the two brothers. Initially, I'm like, who's the most obvious suspect? The older brother, Shay, because he's like the dodgy brother, like he's a bit of a potential criminal, he's got a mean streak. Who's the middle suspect? I guess the dad, because he's like a drunk. That sounded horrible, because he's like an abusive husband who also has an alcohol problem. Who's the least obvious, Kevin, because he's this like nice boy, but he's being shifty. Now my friend Kieran, my good, good friend Kieran, not Katie Books, it's very confusing having two Kierans in my life, always says, not the person you most expect, not the person you least expect, it's the person you middle expect, but I was like, it's Kevin, pre him dying, obviously. Then he died, and I was like, okay, middle expect, it's the dad, but now Frank is suspecting the dad because he got like um, Kevin's post-mortem or whatever from poor little Stephen, who I do feel very sorry for, and it's like, it's someone who was quite fit. It's someone who lost their temper with Rosie and then like slightly planned Kevin's. And he's thinking, okay, he's just found out that the reason that his dad and Rosie's dad hate each other so much is because his dad used to be with Rosie's dad's wife. And he's like, okay, he lost his temper. He wanted to like take out his anger on Matt Daly on Rosie Daly. And then Kevin somehow knew about it. He's killed Kevin. But we are 300 pages into a 430 page book. So it's not the dad. This ain't my first rodeo, we can rule him out. So that brings me back to Shay. I feel like he's the only now other plausible person because in my head, when I started reading it, I was like, I'm pretty sure it's one of the brothers or the dad. And there are like little bits of my brain being like, I think it is Shay. So I do think it's Shay, we will see. And also like, although he was introduced as this like suspect character, we haven't heard from him in a while. So I think it's probably gonna be Shay. I love that I can't remember, this makes it so fun. Um, also, what else to say? I think perhaps, I'm definitely like loving this book. And as I say, like even more so than I remember when I read it the first time. I think perhaps the reason that I thought of it as not my favorite one out of the, the group of them is that I'm like, am I buying into this big romance between Frank and Rosie? I think it's really well written and I'm kind of buying into, well this is the thing, Rosie's a bit of a manic pixie dream girl, just gonna throw it out there. She's like a 19 year old, she's like beautiful and confident and smart and the scenes where we're like with Frank and Rosie when he's remembering them as teenagers, like I say they're really well written and a lot of the stuff about like wanting to escape and the family makes sense, but I'm like she is a bit perfect but then maybe the point is that Frank is seeing it all through these like rose tinted glasses because she could never become anything more than like a teenage dream in which case yes Tana is just a genius but I'm like was it just that I felt a bit like come on Frank but then if I was 19 and my boyfriend died I'd be pretty sad anyway gonna keep reading it now while I wait for my takeaway to arrive I went for Thai food because you know I had Chinese food last night gotta mix it up and get Thai food tonight. Hello, it's Sunday, tested positive again. So you will be getting Troll Grace for 
the entirety of this vlog. Um, yeah, gonna do nothing today because I can't do anything. I have a hundred pages left of Faithful Place, so I'll definitely finish it today. Frank's really gone over. Frank is at that tipping point now where he's like gone over the edge. So I feel like in the first four ton of French books specifically, I'll need to think more when I reread the fifth and the sixth if this applies, but I know it does in the first four. We have this police officer who starts off like with their shit together basically and then they simply do not by the end of it. So like Rob ruins his career, Cassie gets very close to ruining her career. Frank, I can't remember what's gonna happen with his like career, but he just like threatened a woman and got kind of violent. He is losing control. So yeah, I just think it's interesting that that's what Tonne French like explores. And I, I, I love reading about it. I love seeing a character like go on a real journey and seeing how they're affected by something and what kind of happens. And I guess if I was reading this for the first time, I'd maybe be like, oh yeah, his dad did do it. But because I'm reading it for the second time and I'm being really like Kim Possible spy, I'm like, Shay definitely did it, but I still don't know. So we'll see if you like some good, can have some good shit coming out in the last hundred pages. And I'm excited. It's so dark today. Um, okay, let's start this. Let's finish this where we started it. I finished A Faithful Place and I just ended up reading the last hundred pages like in one go because I couldn't put it down. And I actually loved this book. Like I had such a, I think, different reading experience or better. Like all I have really is my memories of the first time and the fact that on Goodreads, I apparently rated it a three. What was she thinking? No, this is a absolutely brilliant book. I really, really loved it. I think I might even prefer it to the likeness. I feel like the likeness has such a good gimmick and such a good like setup and it's very dark academia and that kind of thing that people really like. And I do love the likeness, don't get me wrong. But I'm like, maybe I even prefer this one. I just think that Frank is such an interesting character. Really, really one of the best characters that she's created perhaps. Uh, and I think that Tana French's voice just suits writing as Frank so well. He's so clear to me. Even as soon as I picked it up, it was like, I could remember him so clearly, I guess, because he's in the second one. He just feels like a really real character. I think she has a lot of fun with Frank. I also kind of think if you've read The Searcher, which is one of her standalones, that character sounds quite similar to Frank as well. Um, so yeah, I had this last hundred pages and I think I'd said that he still suspected his dad. He didn't. He did suspect Shay, but he had his kind of own plan. As I mentioned, he'd kind of gone off the rails a bit and he wanted to do his own little justice with Shay. And yeah, the whole, as I was talking about, the kind of like descent of character thing was really interesting because Frank is kind of a bully. Like even when he's talking to Jackie, like he has a go at Jackie for like letting the family meet Holly and stuff. And she's kind of scared of him. And he's like, don't like imply that I'm like dad, but you really see that like pattern in him, like that darkness that is in Frank, which is something that we explore as we go further along in the book. I really liked the, um, kind of conversation that he has with his dad because again we're like pulling out all those themes and something that like Frank is such a character I think who is held back by his own demons and who really hasn't he likes to think he's escaped faithful place but he clearly hasn't like you see that with when he's talking to his dad when he so quickly reverts to like the feelings of fear as a child and the hatred he has for his dad his parenting style with Holly is like all about not being like his family but then also we see in a really like interesting I thought moment with Liv where she's like you, I always knew there was someone else. Yeah, I didn't know about Rosie, but I always knew because again, he was like sabotaging all of his relationships. And I think we see that as I was discussing this sort of pedestal that he keeps Rosie on because she was never allowed to go beyond 19. And yeah, I thought the bits with like Liv were really interesting. I'd forgotten that she was such a like big character in it. And I'll be interested to see, because he left it on a bit of a like, oh, maybe they'll get back together. I'll be interested to see when he crops back up in book five, what kind of came out about that also i'd really forgotten the whole bringing holly into it like there's a great little bit of tana french does foreshadowing very very well because they're all sort of rated in the past tense and it felt like it maybe wasn't the most like plotty mystery like it seemed quite straightforward from when he's like knows it's shay but then there's that bit where he says, yeah, he's like putting Holly to bed. Holly really wants to go see her grandparents. And he's like, way before then I should have spotted it. I'd spent almost 15 years keeping myself and my boys and my girls alive by never ever missing the signs. It was bad enough I'd somehow missed them in Kevin. I should never in a million years have missed them in Holly. I should have seen it flickering. And you're like, oh God, what? Like how's Holly involved in this? And obviously it's that she kind of knew because she found a piece of evidence with Shay and then there's that really tense scene where Shay and Holly are like speaking. And I thought that was just interesting having that child character who just seemed like a way of exploring Frank as a person, actually bringing her into the plot, I thought worked really, really well. And then yeah, we have the big kind of showdown with Shay. Uh, I've said this before about Tana French, she does do the kind of like villainous monologue, which I really like when it all comes out. 
gives the characters time to really like talk through it and I know that's not for everyone but I really like it and I just thought that was such a good way of wrapping it up you know you might have suspected Shay from the start you know it's kind of someone in the family but the reasons behind it although like you don't really sympathize with Shay because he did kill two people it makes sense it's not just like he fancied Rosie so he killed her or whatever like that conversation they have and Shay opening up about like how much he had to protect the younger siblings from their dad and how Frank's never seen that and like always hated it and you do kind of see well you feel sorry for Frank like he shouldn't have had to stick around to look after his dad but you can see why that was frustrating for Shay and that there was so much on him and that he was so angry that Frank just thought he could leave and then also he's so angry now that Frank still acts like like Shay never helped him as a child I just thought all of that big bit between them you know when Shay's just like you don't have a clue you really see that and yeah there is sympathy for Shay their dad is such a like awful evil character and yeah you see how much pressure that would have put on Shay and I, I don't know I think it just really very well fleshed out the why and made him like a very believable villain and then we get the little extra twist in this idea that this plan that Frank and Shay had to kill their father and I just think that brings up such interesting questions around morality and if you would push yourself that far to those limits and Shay kind of implies you know I was changed after we planned that and Frank's like don't blame me for the fact that you killed Rosie but obviously Frank does have some darkness in him and yeah I just love that I'd totally forgotten about that and I think that was a really great like little icing on the cake um, and then we're left not really knowing much about Frank's situation at work it seems like he kind of got off a bit more lightly I do think she's she is a bit kinder to Frank compared to I guess Cassie kind of gets her happy and her happy ending as well like compared to like someone like Rob who the case just destroys his whole life but again we don't really get anything tied up with what happened to Stephen and then that's going to come up in the fifth book which again I'm really excited to see play out and then it ended kind of like quite classically with him thinking about Rosie again because this is all about Rosie really about his childhood and so we say this Tana French writes nostalgia really well and these like childhood memories that people have these teenage memories and I think ending it with Frank thinking about like the first time that him and Rosie were ever something when they were teenagers was a perfect end to it and she just writes so beautifully but um yeah I just loved it I really really loved it it was great it was so it's like a subtle I'd say it's definitely a subtler book than maybe in the woods all the likeness is but that really worked for me and yeah Frank as a character is just so interesting I can see why I think in the past I'd heard some people say this was their favorite and I was like what but now I can see that and as ever when I finish one of these books I just want to pick up the next one especially because I've been the most excited to reread Broken Harbor because I've always said it was my favorite but I will not I'll wait because yeah so we basically have January and February to read Broken Harbor I'll post my vlog that's not much but thank you so much if you watched this kind of boring but very in-depth I think vlog about this book I had a lot of fun with it please tell me in the comments i'd love to hear all of your thoughts on it that is the point of the book club and yeah thanks for watching obviously i would love you subscribed my instagram my storygraph will be linked down below and i'll see you in my next one bye, bye.